Hey guys, welcome back. BDC Gare here. We're back with the weekly recap of all things Injustice. This is for the week of June 30th, 2022. To start off, the current character challenge is Rebirth Green Arrow, which is a one-week repeat as always. The required characters for that are Cyborg, Nightwing, and Killer Frost, who are Bronze, Bronze, and then Challenge Gold, respectively. So unfortunately, this is going to be hard for anybody who doesn't already have you know, copy of Killer Frost, there's no real right. good way of getting her if you don't already have her. Right. And the only way to have her is having beaten another challenge. Or getting really lucky from the challenge pack. I guess so, that's true. Uh, uh. Uh, so his passive is Trick Arrows, which is Green an green Arrow. I almost said Green Lantern. <laughs> um, green Arrow fires a random Trick Arrow that triggers on impact when he tags in. When Green Arrow switches for another Rebirth character, he fires a random Trap Arrow that's triggered by certain enemy actions. If not triggered, Trap Arrow disappears after 5 seconds. He's got 1,300 attack, 1,350 health. He was last available on the 2nd of September, 2021. And you're not entirely wrong if you'd say Green Lantern, because Green Lantern could actually make green arrows. Yeah, I would have been wrong, but thank you. <laughs> Anyways. So he's got excellent high stats. The probably, probably the most interesting feature about him is that his combo ender has five hits. So if you really wanted to take advantage of him, you could use gears that have combo ender effects like Superpower Pill, Razzle Scimitar, Gauntlets of Azrael, and that gives him the, a real potential to hit above his weight class with basic attacks. And if we look at his passive, so he, he fires one out of three trick arrows on Tegan. The poison is the green arrow, explosive knockdown is a red arrow, and that's the one that breaks a stun. Uh, power drain is a blue arrow. So for his teammates, one out of three on tag outs, when he tags out and his rebirth teammate comes in poison green arrow triggers on block explosive knockdown red arrow triggers with damage on tag out and power drain the blue arrow triggers on attempted a special which is the cost of the special and then they can't get it back with a tantu mm -hmm. so if you're going to use him as a special specialist you want to tag him in it a lot so besides the obvious choice of having rebirth teammates in an attempt to maximize his passive Hawk Girl Prime, really good for decreasing the time between tagos. And that's why the team that we're demonstrating right now includes Hawk Girl Prime. Mm -hmm. But, so here's the problem, I think, with this whole thing. Because Tanti Totem means that the most effective strategy in general is having your special specialist mow down the other team, a good chance you're not going to be tagging in and out a lot. Yeah, this changes how you play, uh -huh. and it doesn't mix with other standard ways of playing. Right. And if you're going to be using him as your, you know, as a basics specialist, you won't actually get a chance to play him a lot. The combo ender, if you're going to be using Tansy Totem, mm -hmm. doesn't come into play very much. But it is very effective. The added problem, I think, with him is that if you're going to be using him as a main character like we're trying to here, mm -hmm. his special two won't knock anybody out except on the last hit. Which makes him a lot weaker in general as a special specialist because... Anybody who revives means they're not going to be knocked out by a special two. Mm -hmm. Or people who have uh, triggers on low percent health. Right. You know, like shields, right? With right. The... right. Mm -hmm. Oh, artists. Raven. Raven, too. Yeah. So there's a lot of times where that's kind of a challenge. Right. And that also makes him actually vulnerable against someone we're using on our own team if he's facing her is Rebirth Raven. Mm. Because she'll steal his power on tag. And if he knocks somebody out, she will guarantee steal his power as opposed to other people whose special two can hit more than one person. Yeah. They're invulnerable. And the other funny thing is when I was first trying to play him, he doesn't count as a Rebirth character for Wally West passive. You want to use him on a Rebirth team. Mm. Interesting. The other thing is that despite the Rebirth Raven team being so good, the trick arrows, when Rebirth Raven tags in, it means that there's a bunch of times where we lose any potential stun effect. Mm. So as hard as we're working to, like, so it, again, it's normally not a problem with Rebirth Raven, right? Because she's not, she's not necessarily a stun type of character. Yeah. But now that I've been playing a bit with stacking Necron Scythe and Cloak of Destiny, Mm -hmm. It's like she's got a superpower. If yeah. she happens to tag in, special one, the first half of her special pretty much knocks anybody out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd almost rather that he didn't have those passives and he just had that combo ender. It's very rarely that I think, I mean, besides the, you know, that Joker, the 
unhinged. Yeah. Where I'd rather that he didn't have his passive. There's a few characters, not many. I think this is one of them. I'd rather it's hard he for the passive to be a straight downgrade in a lot of cases. Yeah. 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 So anyways, we've had two complete runs of a 43 week cycle that was first uh, appearing in May of 2020. We're 24 weeks into the third cycle, so that's 110 weeks total. Uh, if the pattern holds, which we have no reason to believe it's breaking, uh, next week should be Teen Titans Raven. And just a reminder that that cycle uh, doesn't include 23 challenge yeah. characters. So and If it changed, it would be a big change after two years of not, no changes. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this week's multiplayer reward is Nightwing's Ninjato, which becomes the Brandish Ninjato. And its effects, when it's maxed out, are... Uh, retarget 90% of enemy AOE damage to wielder of this item with 50% damage absorb, a 40% max health increase, Nightwing specific ability, which is reflect 16% damage, and the evolved ability, which is give 300% of received AOE damage as power. Uh, it's last available on the 25th of November 2021. Uh, we have been through two complete cycles of the online rewards. That's a 31 reward sequence. We are 16 weeks into a third cycle which is a total of 78 weeks of a consistent pattern, uh, with next week being Riddler's staff. Right, right. So, yeah, you know what? The fact that I see it a lot in multiplayer means that there's definitely people who like him, or sorry, like the gear, and they really like it on uh, Batman, Ninja, Nightwing. My problem mm -hmm. is, because of the way we play, I, I, I don't really have a great use for it, because this is really a, a defensive gear, there's not really much offensive potential. If you want to take advantage of what is potentially an offensive or offensive abilities, you're required to be facing someone who gives slash damage. Yeah, and that's the quintessential sort of defense gear, which is one that against certain teams is really, really good and might screw them up pretty bad. Yeah. But against most teams, it doesn't do anything because on yeah. a defensive team, you only need to win some fights. So if yeah. you're geared up to be really great against a certain type of team... Right. All you need to do is get lucky and have somebody fight you for you to get the points, right. whereas you're not participating in every single fight like yeah. you are when you're playing yeah. yourself. Yeah, if we look at the abilities of this, 90% of splash damage gets pulled out of the character holding the Ninjato, and 50% of that gets dissipated, meaning teammates only get hit with 10% of the original splash damage, which is pretty significant. The person holding it gets 45%, or half of the 90, in addition to the original special damage. Mm -hmm. Now, 40%, Boosted health means they have a better chance of surviving the special and the splash. The f one thing I, I still never understood is that number 300% receives splash becomes power. I don't know what they're translating, 300% of what. However, I know that it's a significant amount because I've seen whenever we've played with a splash team and we happen to play against somebody with a Nijato, yeah. we can often tag in with three bars of power, say, mm -hmm. when we're using Flashpoint and doing splash with Deathstroke and League of Assassins knives. Mm-hmm. Uh, damage reflection is good. 16% does not seem like a lot, but I guess if you're the one facing, if you're using this gear and you're facing somebody who's going to do splash damage on you, it, every little bit counts for helping you survive and then yeah. generating power. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the cases, I mean, it, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't that you're facing somebody who does splash damage, but there's a couple of really big potential splash damage cards like Lucia Bane and any of the back rolls. If you do face them, it would mean a huge amount of power. But I got to tell you, they so rarely, not only do we face them only a handful of times, but when we do face them, they very rarely get a chance to hit us with Splash because mm -hmm. we've got so many strategies to counter it. Um, yeah, it doesn't see, seem worth it. I mean, it's definitely more of a defensive gear that you could leave on a character on a team that you're not going to be playing for a while that you're leaving on defense in multiplayer. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you, it's not even... A, even with uh, our Flashpoint team, it's not really that big a problem and shouldn't be a problem with most Splash teams if you gear them properly. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you're doing Splash and have a Tenzu Totem, someone coming in with lots of power because of the Ninjato after their teammate is knocked out, it just becomes a race to see who gets it first. Because you're getting your power back, they're coming with a lot of power, race against the clock. Yeah. And if it's not a teammate, but the person in front of you that has Ninjato, they're more likely to get knocked out. Hmm. Right? So they reflect some of the damage. Okay, so that's a little bit less. But they're taking the, the, the damage of the special, and they're taking the damage from the splash that they're pulling from their other teammates. That's true. So 
the, the probably the most interesting thing I should mention that I think I mentioned this last time it came up is how there's a really funky uh, uh, interplay between the opponent having Ninjato and you having Master's Death Cart. Mm. And I guess you could look at, I won't, we, we, I've already gone on long enough. I won't go into all the abilities of the Master's Death Cart. Yeah. But the, the key is when you tag in, you get power with Master's Death Cart for every one of those little hits that count as you hitting them. Yeah. If they're Nightwing and reflecting the damage, they get power because their reflected hits are hitting you. Yeah. And then you get another small amount of power from getting hit. I mean, in multiplayer, it's not a lot, but you're still getting more power than you would have otherwise yeah. from Master's Death Cart because of that. So that's sort of a little bit interesting, a little bit dangerous. What makes it even more interesting is when you do a special, mm -hmm. they get power from reflecting the special damage. They get power from the splash damage on their off-screen opponents that's redirected to the ninja Ninjato holder as reduced spl splash damage. And they get hit, but it's a small amount. And then they get more power from the ability of changing splash damage to power. Yeah. And so with that splash damage with Master's Death Cart, you get the Ninjato holder uh, power. It starts to rise really fast and continue to rise right after you've done a special, but it ke just keeps on sort of building up really quickly mm -hmm. instead of just a big bulk amount. And the funny yeah. thing is you get power too. You're getting a, a bunch of power. Um, it's just weird. Like it, it messes It's a weird it up. interaction. Yeah. It just feels off. Yeah. Yeah. So if you knock them out, it's fine. But if you don't, they're building up a ton of power to knock you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, in the store, we've got the Teen Titans Raven pack for twenty four ninety nine. All these prices are going to be in Canadian because we're Canadian. Right. Uh, so that's all that we get to see. Uh, there's no credits with it. So it's a really terrible deal worse than usual uh and part of the reason why it's such a terrible deal is because it's what we expect to see next week in the challenge that you're going right. to be able to you know get a copy of for like a, just a little bit of your time instead of 24.99 of your dollars uh and it would unlock in your store when you complete it next week uh and so then you can buy the character for credits and when you buy it from pack for money it doesn't unlock in your store so you're right. only getting the one copy so it's just a much worse version of actually playing the game for earning it in about a week yeah uh the tag team pack we also have in the store uh which is also 24.99 which comes with luchador bane hawk girl and new 52 nightwing uh you know the first two are challenges the third one is something you can get directly from the store yeah so you know three characters i'll tell you what would have made this better what? if it had been a a pack with killer frost in it because then you're getting Killer Frost and it's potentially giving you the ability to finish the challenge. That would be better. Smart. Yeah, would whenever be they have a challenge requirement in the store, I feel like they could really make some money. It would be not great if they did it on purpose, right. but if they had the option to buy it, they could, I think, make more money that way for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we also have the character bundle Arkham Allies, which is uh, around for its second week. We have the Survivor Pack, which has been around for 25 weeks now. The character bundle Batman Universe, which has been around for 30 weeks now. Uh, the Most Wanted Pack, which has been around for 37 weeks now. Uh, and we have the three 300 nth metal packs, the Celebration Packs for Joker, Aquaman, and Shazam, which have all been around for 23 weeks or 25 weeks if you're Aquaman. So they've been around for a long time. They're just, yeah. they're still celebrating. Uh, Potty hotty. Yeah. In our Survivor, we have the League of Assassins gear set until the 13th of July, 2022. Phantom Zone is finished. Fight 62 is still broken. Uh, there's double XP. And for so this coming weekend, yeah, it's For us, already. it would be Canada Day. But it's probably not for us. And by for us, I mean for Canada, I guess. Because yeah. personally, you know, we're not necessarily celebrating Canada Day this year. Uh, and then for the USA, uh, it's probably Independence Day. Right. right. But, you know, it's a long weekend for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and it's still labeled Canada Day for us. Um, last weekend's breakthrough was Cyborg, Batgirl, and Black Adam. This coming weekend's is Deadshot, Wonder Woman, and Static. If you're looking at uh, the breakthrough cycle for yourself, you can find the link to that in the description of this video. There's a thread from Devlin16 that goes through the complete cycle. Right. Right. And there we go. So we're not going to go through glitches because it is not the first... Uh, video of the month. We are one day off from that, uh, so you can expect that next week. Uh, you can go back to the first video of this month if you're looking for that information. 
uh, which was on the 6th, or sorry, the 2nd, not the 6th, Yeah. Uh, the 2nd of this month, uh, the important bit is that the challenge reset is working and confirmed on the newest challenge. That's the only thing that really, you know, changes in any meaningful right, way. Right, our Rebirth Green Arrow. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there we go, and everything else is the same. And you can always check out our playlist if you want to look at all the currently working glitches and how to do them for yourself. So there we go. Uh, and to finish up, we'd like to give a huge, huge thank you to all the lovely folks who support us on Patreon. Yeah, that would be Bumble Ben, Consul Peasant, and Ed Woon at the top tier, last word. Cinemac and Mohammed Al Shady at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Maul, Michael DeVries, Brandon C., Irvin Ruiz, Eddie Du, and Hoshi127 at the credited level. And Chris Wolf, Scarlet Danny, Awesome Gamer 2 for 1, Pabu RS, Gavin Malat, and Isfra E at the gratitude level. Thank you so much for your support, and thanks so much to all of you for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.